Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Designer Studio episode. Today we are looking at the culmination of 2020 uh, um, Great War Bricks, which yep. is the HMS Wars fight. So this is the final model of, uh, of the month of November. Definitely a heck of one to, to end on. A different <laughs> scale than you've built in in the past, right, but right. at the same time, especially for a ship like this, all the detail without having to go Johnston size. Right, right, right. So this is something that we, a few years ago when we were doing Great War Bricks, we mm -hmm. had, we skipped a year, I think, maybe even two, I think, Okay. Um, when we had like Great War Month. And this was on the schedule. This was the last project of the last time we did Great War Bricks, mm -hmm. but we ran out of time, so I never got to do it. So this is actually a couple of year old project that, oh, interesting. that, that um, sort of, sort of, it morphed a little bit. So we have one 700 scale battleships. We have mm -hmm. the um, Yamoto, the Yamoto, the, the Missouri, North, the Missouri, and the North Carolina, mm -hmm. and the we're going to do a British ship. We're going to do the War Spite as the, as a British a British contender in its World War One phase for uh, Great War Month years ago, a couple mm -hmm. years ago, never happened. And this it came up and like let's let's we have an empty slot to fill. Um, we we did some rearranging of the schedule to make room for it, and it turns out. I could get it in this time, yeah. Um, but I did do an upgrade. I actually doubled the size of the ship. So the sure. other ones, the old ships, are all 700 scale, which is a common model scale. Mm -hmm. um, the next size up in common model scale would be 350. So hence one 350 scale. I have a, a, a several one 350 scale actual model ships. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a good one for plastic models as well because you can yeah. just kind of see this like. It's like mantle size without being you know, right. huge mantle size. Right, right, and you could go Yamato size and mm -hmm. it still wouldn't be that big. So, um, But that's that's something for the future. Okay. For, for, for right now. <laughs> so I, I love this scale. Basi it basically lets you do one brick height approximately equals a deck height. Oh, so, sure. Hence, you can see like the, the, the this has a ton of printing on it, but I was able to put little portholes on here. Mm -hmm. So every brick height, well, actually it's brick on the side, is approximately the right the right height of, of a, you know, a, a a, a man standing there and, and, and it makes it really well. easy to uh, to make the ship in the right scales. Yeah, very, very cool. Well, I will say too, as much fun as the model is, the printing, especially with the amount of portholes and the anchors, etc., and then that awesome flag, this is yet another model where it re that printing really takes it to the next level. Well, and it, it's kind of unique because I, it was sort of a revelation. Like, I built this ship, the last time I built a ship, there's no printing on it. Right. It was like, you know, I think the, a couple of stickers on the, on the, the, the Yamato and mm -hmm. the, uh, um, the Missouri, and some engraving actually on the uh, North, Carolina. North Carolina. Oh, cool! That had a serial number. That was a that was a that was a one of a kind. So you, if you got the North Carolina, you, you're, you're lucky. Be out. proud. Yeah, those, <laughs> those are quite rare. Um, but I, the re kind of revelation, like, oh, I can put the water line on there. I can print this. So this black line all the way around the ship, that's all printed. That's on there. nuts. Um, the model itself does actually come apart at that point. So mm -hmm. if you wanted to display model, if you wanted to build like, hey, I want to build the Battle of Jutland and have all the Queen Elizabeth class dreadnoughts, you could buy several of these and stick them on the, oh, stick that's in, the cool. in the water, which mm -hmm. you could be your tabletop or your floor, or, mm -hmm. you know, some blue blue construction paper, <laughs> and you could have the the high seas fleet there. So, um, but as it's built right now, it does have the bottom of the hull on it. Uh, it's red. The Royal Navy has a. a you know, it's, it's all their ships are painted red on the right. bottom, and it's it's an anti, it's a rust prohibitive, rust preventative uh, paint. I never knew that, but yeah. that's cool to know. I just so, thought it looked nice. <laughs> right, and that's that's why below the waterline they're all they're all red. This is a bright red, mm -hmm. uh, and that would be if it was freshly painted. It was exactly what. It yeah, looked but that, that's what looks good for display. I mean, a little right. bit of color. It's like with how many dark bluish gray models you've put together, I'm not surprised you wanted to add a little bit of red to something. <laughs> right, right. And, and I've done other the other ships I've done, the bottoms, I've done it in dark red, which mm -hmm. is, would have considerably added to the price of the kit, yeah, um, if you could find all these pieces. So, uh, hence, re regular red mm -hmm. um, was a more affordable color, able to make the model bigger. So this is really, really, it, it I, I, I can only want to emphasize how like durable this thing is. It is a it's beast. solid it is a too. Brick. There's like no. There's I mean you can't <laughs> feel any hollowness. Even even in the tanks you can kind of feel that like there's room for crew in there. This thing is is solid brick. Right. It is and it, it is it is well built. You know I, I when I built these stands I built it so like it's going to take four stands because it's a big long ship but it has no sag whatsoever. That <laughs> is take so the awesome. Off. <laughs> so. It, uh, I believe it actually comes with tiles that you can cover those holes if you wanted to. Just, oh, okay, cool. It, you know, you could you could display it with the outer the outer stands, the mm -hmm. inner stands, or no stands at all. It'll sit flat, just like it was sitting in dry docks. Mm -hmm. um, but the 
I think, what did we count, 83 printed pieces or something? Oh man, the part count is <laughs> online on the product page. You can find the link like right down here. But yeah, this is another one that has an absurd amount so of every, printed So every elements. tile, every piece here with, with the black line, that's printed. Mm -hmm. that's, you know, it crosses over around the bow. You have the anchors and stuff printed on there. It even has the name of the ship. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that which would be appear there in, in real life as well. So. Not to mention the awesome printed display tiles as well <laughs> yeah, in the great. front, which that I like great. that design around. That, that that totally adds to it, though. I mean, that's something that you know people ask. It's your, your conversation starter. Like, what's the HMS Warspite? And then you've got them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this, and, and we should say that HMS Warspite. The reason I chose the Warspite is one of the most, you know. It, the British ships, British ships of World War II and World War One, which mm -hmm. this was created. Just the British Navy. Right. This is one of one of those ships that it was there at every major action. So right. it was at Jutland. It was you know it was involved in, in actions in World War II in the in the, um, in the Mediterranean and, and the the Atlantic. It's been it was everywhere, and even it, it refused to die. The ship, like when, when the Royal Navy after World War II decided they had an epiphany and said we don't need any more battleships, we're going to scrap them all. Um, it broke free of its tug. Yes, okay. I <laughs> was, was like, wondering not, if we were going to tell this story. You're not, it's so good. You're not bringing us, you know, this ship that didn't want to go to the break. And then they had to break. leave it. Yeah, it, it broke free and it beached itself off the off the English coast. Yep, just a big <laughs> middle gun port or whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like so, you're not putting me it, away. It, yeah, yeah. So it, it resisted till, till the very end. Mm -hmm. um, this is the World War I configuration. This is, this is how... Um, she appeared in the Battle of Jutland, mm -hmm. um, which of course was the major battle of World War II or World War One. I'm sorry, um, it, it was not a, the conclusive battle that they they had hoped to have that mm -hmm. the English would sweep the Germans and from it just the, over from yep. the seas. I mean, they didn't in, in the end basically achieve that, but not by like sinking a bunch of German ships. Mm -hmm. um, they did it by. Um, scaring the Germans away, really, and just not moving, <laughs> <laughs> right? And you know that's that's part of the English uh, military, English naval tradition is is naval dominance. Absolutely. So the, you know, that it, it was it was the same in World War One. It was in World War Two that the uh, the Atlantic Ocean was j basically a giant English lake, mm -hmm. and you know, like the Italians thought that the Mediterranean was their was their lake, but the it was not never true because the English contested. Could close it World off whenever they wanted to. World War I, the Italians were on our side. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so, um, but that, that's, that's, that's another talk. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously we've talked a little bit about the, the awesome printing in here too, but tell me a little bit more about the design that goes into like the superstructure, building at this scale, capturing that detail. You know, how do you, obviously you've built a lot, but how do you capture that? How do you just transfer it over from the blueprints? Well, fortunately for me, the, this is a really well-documented ship. I mean, the sure. Queen Elizabeth class, it, it was the first of the dreadnoughts. Dreadnought meaning all big gun battleship. That's oh. the, so when you hear it, it's a dreadnought, all, it refers back to the HMS dreadnought, which they made. It was a revolutionary ship where they didn't have all this mix of like all this different weaponry. They said, we're going to pick one caliber of gun the main guns that will make the whole ship the same, which simplifies everything. It mm -hmm. simplifies all your armor can be uniform, all your all your, ar your armaments are uniform, use the same ammunition. Um, and it revolutionized shipbuilding. So when the HMS Dreadnought came out, everybody scrambled to like copy it. Because they knew they needed that. And, and the British had all these designs, they just kept cranking them out. And then this is the next level, they call these super dreadnoughts. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the first time that they made these super set uh, uh, turrets one mm -hmm. over the other of a uh, you know same caliber. So this was pretty revolutionary. You have um, eight of these giant. I think they're fourteen inch guns. Um, they can if you're like you know doing a broadside, you've got all eight guns can reach you. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, and even just for offshore, you know, for for land positions. Parking this thing offshore a little bit, you're probably just like, all right, run that white flag up. Those are huge. Right, right, yeah. It's it's <laughs> although it's it's been proven. Again and again, and the English can tell you this: that you don't want to necessarily uh, attack a land battery of a similar <laughs> caliber with your ship because sure. they can they can hide in the ground where your ship right. is just a sitting You're duck floating. out in water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they, I, it's it's been proven. So, <laughs> um, one thing that's that's very unique about the British dreadnoughts is they have these tripod masts. Mm -hmm. So it's three. You have the main mast and then two supports. So you, they call them a tripod mast. This this is. Very, you know, very characteristic of that with the, with the tripod setting. Mm -hmm. um, it has secondary guns. These guns along the side here, they're they're meant to take on motor torpedo boats. So oh, or sure, small destroyers. World War One. Yeah. 
So, well, they, they had this, they were called torpedo boats, and the torpedo boat was anything from a, a motor boat mm -hmm. to a destroyer equipped with, with torpedoes. Um, basically, the only threat other than another large battleship to mm -hmm. this thing. Um, at the time, there really wasn't like an aircraft threat. It was, it was just, there were airplanes, but they, they thought so highly of them that they only put two anti aircraft guns on this. <laughs> yeah, sure. They, were, they weren't worried. <laughs> no. Um, it is a wooden deck ship, so you can see. I love that color transition yeah. too. It is it, the metal sides and the wooden deck. Um, you know, it's it's very characteristic of all battleships. Mm -hmm. When it's you're pretty too. When you're basically a bathtub in the water, <laughs> which is what it is. It's a big metal, yep, hollow like a canoe. Uh, if you put a big metal deck way up high on the deck like that, it'll weight you down. It also make you a capsizing. And it uh, can't like breathe necessarily as well too, because the wooden decks can adjust to those temperatures a little bit. Right, more right, and. And there is a metal deck, but that metal deck is way down by the water line. Mm -hmm. So this everything above water is 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 just to hold the water out and keep the air in, mm -hmm. and keep it buoyant. Um, so the wooden deck is typical. You'll you'll see that they did. You know, even the Missouri, the last battleship. You know, the, the Missouri and the Wisconsin, the last battleships made in World War II, mm -hmm. still had that wooden deck. Um, totally characteristic. This ship is built what we call studs out, snot techniques, studs not on top. Mm -hmm. So. The studs face the outer outer sides, which is why you have tiles. You're able to get this tile yep. effect, and that actually goes up until the the, the surface, the, the stuff on the surface is actually stuck on top. Mm -hmm. of that, so. Well, and you can you can even see too from the top. It like the, that technique kind of uh, represents the boards yeah, of, oh yeah, of that wooden planking. deck, and that yeah, the planking, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's a really cool thing to be able to capture because obviously you could just put tan bricks there and make that that color, but when you get those grooves. It's next level detail, man. Right, and another thing, I mean, if you can, you can, you can see this, that, that really gradual transition. Mm -hmm. um, that is, you know, when you're building studs on the side, you, you, you build, you're building everything at plate height. Right. So a plate is one eighth of an inch, and you're, you're, you're generally your variations would be one eighth of an inch. And if you're building bricks up, you only get, that's, that's two and a half <laughs> times that. that right, wide. exactly, so pretty thicker. significant drop. So you see big chunky mm -hmm. transitions. Um, this is actually half plate transitions. All these steps are half plates. Wow. So it's, it's one sixteenth of an inch, every one of those little uh, jumps down. Mm -hmm. um, that is kind of next level stuff. That's I, a really cool taper. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I, 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 I was, I, when I set out to build this ship, I was like, well, I have twice as much room to work with, so I can make it twice as detailed. Mm -hmm. so, and, I, and I think I achieved that. So I don't know if anybody else has done that technique on a ship yet. Um, it's quite possible I'm not the first, but it was it was definitely a challenge, made it a little bit more interesting mm -hmm. build, and especially to be able to have that follow through after the, at the waterline break. Yeah. So. Yeah, that must have been quite the quite the design. But hey, that's that's what people expect from Brick Meaning, man, the absolute <laughs> best, and, and and you gave it to them once again. Yeah, and it's hard to look. You look at a finished piece like this and say, oh, that's just a, it's a really nice ship, but it, really the magic is inside. Yes, right, the way it comes together. And that's the fun that you get to experience when you pick up the kit, put it together yourself as well, uh, and then obviously you end up with the, the excellent model to be able to display in the manner of your choosing or, yes. you know, build some more and play, play Battleship. Right. Oh, yeah. And you can <laughs> bludgeon, bludgeon your, your opponent to death. Yeah, with right. Wait, wait, I didn't say that. <laughs> it does have that sort of like... Uh... <laughs> it's, it's, it's half club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, if, you're, if you're looking for a sturdy, swooshable model, I don't, I don't know how much brutal swooshing this would have done in real life, but hey, if you want to swoosh it, you've got that option. Right. So, very, very cool. <laughs> swooshable. Is that... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can play with it in the tub. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it does. It, that, that was the first when it was all built. I was like, I don't need a bathtub to play with this. <laughs> the uh, war spite versus rubber ducky. Right, right. Well, I have to build some more ships. So. <laughs> well, very cool. We're looking forward to see where it uh, goes. But this is the end of uh, of, of uh, um, Great War Bricks here for 2020. No minifig with this one, so we won't be checking in with Landon. But uh, Dan, thanks for walking through the HMS War Spite at 1350 scale. Thank you for watching.